A satellite picture of North America if an asteroid hit Yellowstone 3,000 years ago. Or I guess if just Yellowstone itself went Super Saiyan and blew a huge hole in the entire continent. Or why not just say the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs instead of it hitting off the Yucatan Peninsula hit here. Either way, it all works. If this scenario actually played out, we'd have a huge archipelago in the middle of North America. It makes me think that maybe there could have been like a Native American Roman Empire that formed over here if they used their boats correctly. This is basically like an inland Mediterranean like this. One of the only things that stayed the same in this map is the fact that Wyoming doesn't exist, doesn't exist in real life either. I wonder if the climate would actually still be similar. Would this still be like a vast desert wasteland? Because I seriously doubt it. I would think there'd be a lot more like vegetation at least off the coast here, but I don't know. But one thing I do know is y'all ain't subscribed. I think it's getting a little bit better though, like not too much, but you know, slightly 54% are now not subscribed. It's like a coin toss people want to subscribe to this channel. Mm, no, f*** this guy. The holiest empire of Bhutan. Finally, one of the smallest nations in East Asia gets their rightful place in this continent. In the new age of the great empire, much progress has been seen in the holy plans. The Thunder Dragon Empire has risen and purified all the lands under Buddha's light. Got a lot more questions about some of the other changes that were made on this map though, like why divide India like this? What the hell happened to Vietnam? As well as Russia's divided, I'm assuming that's how they got this land. They probably destroyed Russia from the inside made that collapse into two different states. China? What's that? Bhutan is now censored. Bhutan's social score is gonna go down after this one. Big Greece done right. This is after WW Uno, and I'm assuming this is just after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Now they are just Turkey, and the Greeks have gotten a lot of their islands back, as well as, oh boy. Now that would be one epic cameo right there. This wasn't completely out of the question, right? I mean, the Bhutan one, definitely, but this seems reasonable. So this is what Turkey looked like briefly during 1920, and Greece did get a lot of this stuff, kind of. Of, just for a little bit there so that other map's not like out of the question I feel if they just said hey, yo, we're not gonna give this back to you We're gonna keep it the proposed northwestern state of Lincoln Isn't there still somewhat of a small movement to make this happen to this day the state of Lincoln the capital would be Spokane Population over a million not bad. Oh wait, that probably isn't accurate though That's that this is like in an alternative universe, right? Congressional districts 2 and electoral votes 4 interestingly enough though This is not the only proposed state of Lincoln the other one would divide Texas in half this was proposed in 1869 after America got done fighting themselves. This was actually not completely out of the question either though because it was even brought up in Congress but it was rejected in there. The northwestern part of Lincoln though would actually have a population of about just under 2 million. There's a lot more people that lived here than I thought. However, usually when we talk about a 51st state, the most probable answer would probably be one of these islands out here that we control. Puerto Rico being a big one, the US Virgin Islands, the Fortnite Islands, a lot of stuff in the Pacific we could also make too. Oh yeah, then there's DC. That's actually probably the most most popular. I always see that push. I mean, that's like the most popular, I feel. How'd I forget that one? What if Texas succeeded from itself? Dividing Texas into five different sides. And this is typically how I see most Texans divide up this state. Something along these lines. We got a whole lot of nothing in Texlahoma. Then we got rich people from Dallas and Austin. Oh, Austin. Don't get Texans to start talking about Austin. An ancient world divided between the three empires. The Roman Empire, the Republic of the Hellenics, the Hellenas, the Republic of Greece, Greece, basically, and Egypt down over here. That would be a scary combination, but you know what? Each one would probably dislike each other enough. There might be like a massive stalemate. Like this actually could be the borders for a little while. Wonder why the Greeks and the Egyptians have come to this agreement of a demilitarized zone. Maybe that's just to keep things a bit safer. The world includes a Poland. Gotta appreciate that. You know, the Mali Empire is looking pretty massive too down here. They need to be careful. Now I can get behind this one. What if Germany and Yugoslavia had their history switched? So I guess after the the HRE, they would become the Socialist Federal Republic of Germany. Then in the 1990s, a lot of things would break down into the anti-SFR forces, the pro-nationalist movement, and then just the Bavarian forces. And then when it was all said and done, there'd be a lot of anger and a lot of places would be split up, be an independent Hanover, Brandenburg, Saxony. On the other side of things, after WW2 was over, we'd have US occupation in the north, Soviet occupation in the south, UK and France would get a little bit of something something too, then they would come together. Big ol' wall going straight through like modern day Serbia I think and then bam when that Cold War ends we got that big beautiful Federal Republic of Yugoslavia oh man 
that this only existed in my dreams. It does make me wonder just how powerful they would be if they were still around like this. If you look at each country's individual population in 2021, if that old nation came together, they'd currently be in about 20 million pop. Who knows what the impact of their economy would be, especially after like a couple decades of this divide than this. Denmark in a different world, basically a reversed Denmark, where this peninsula goes straight to Germany and the Danes have taken the tip. Sweden has lost their edge. I say let's hold a vote. Let's see what the people of Legoland actually want. I wouldn't be surprised just to stick it to their old rival. They might choose to take this and just give up these lands. Here's a proposal for the 79 states of America and it already looks uh, disgusting. Be a lot of getting used to. Basically, New England becomes just huge New Hampshire for some reason. Why New Hampshire? I don't know. I think this map attempts to give every state about equal land area. That's why things look a little strange. If that's the case, they're gonna have drastically different population levels. Like, some people are not even gonna live in some of these states. There's probably like three people living right here. Like the throwback here to the New Netherlands. That makes a little bit more sense. I mean, if this were to have take place, like, around the 1700s I guess that's the scenario why did we keep all of the old English names you think like we're kind of pretty pissed at Britain still Virginia looks similar and actually so does Tennessee and Kentucky you can still recognize some of them thank you for fixing the border gore of Michigan keeping this upper peninsula come on guys what is that what is that how does Michigan get the peninsula I'll always be so confused about that Texas still looks somewhat Texas there's Dallas and Waco and Austin they have all that under their control I wonder if the Northern Californians are gonna like this they are no longer even considered California anymore whoever made this map considers Southern California more essentially California. And this would obviously flip the Electoral College upside down so the creator made different uh, strongholds for each political party. And then there's the swing states. It would of course still be Florida. And then there's Texas. I just realized what you did to Florida. I'm I'm horrified. Look at this long chilly country. We don't need a chili in America. What the hell? If the USSR was somehow still alive today, this could have been a possibility of that happening if Kazakhstan decided, you know what, no, we're just gonna keep being the USSR. For a brief time, this actually was the case. They were the last to leave. I mean, why not? That'd have been pretty fun. That would have completely changed Borat too. I could already see the diplomatic consequences of all this. You know, Kazakhstan would claim all of the former Soviet lands. It'd be like a similar situation with Taiwan and China today. What if Portugal never settled South America? Specifically Portugal. I don't know why this guy's like, screw Portugal. So I'm assuming all of Brazil has gone to Spain Spain pretty much took the entirety of South America and then obviously Spain was not going to be able to hold on to all that so it was going to be freed in which Paraguay, Bolivia, and Peru would all get additional lands. Then there's a lot of these new other independent countries that would form up. Oh, Ecuador and Colombia also get some stuff too. I love that they include some flags. That's how you know we're deep into this lore. They really thought about all this. I am curious why they decided to divide some of this stuff the way they did. Is it in terms of population or culture they feel? I'm also loving the detail of having the cities also all have like Spanish names. There's no Portuguese city names. We went deep for this one. The microstates of America. We've seen some of these designs before. There's so many microstates in Europe. Why don't we have them in North North America, this one actually might be the most realistic to me. It's the Principality of Niagara. And you know what? It makes sense because it is perfectly in between Canada and US. Maybe this could be like just a tourist hub or something like that. This place would be dominated by the Iroquois and it'd have a population of not much, obviously. So this would just be something that I guess the US and Canada would both decide to leave. This actually sounds like a kind of a cool idea. Maybe it could have happened. It's just like a diplomatic gesture. Here you go. It's better than Oklahoma. What if Denmark Mark won this battle. Um, it would basically still be Denmark, almost. No, but I see that they got a little bit of extra stuff down here. Got a little chunk here. This looked like a conflict where Denmark was kind of just on their own. They had some help from Danish Iceland and some Swedish volunteers. But man, those enemies, that's tough. I've heard about this before, but I've never dived too deeply into it. Military clashes as they went up through the Denmark Peninsula. Partition plans for 1864. They was just gonna go for all of it. This really fits well with that other map. Denmark really could have just lost everything to Germany at this point. They would have been forced to just slap around Sweden after that. If Russia achieved all of its territorial expansion goals, this seems so unbelievably unrealistic, but I guess you gotta set the bar high, man. This is a Russia in 1935. They would be all the way down in the Arabian Peninsula. Turkey wouldn't exist anymore. They'd reach kind of into Yugoslavia. I mean, a different Russia kind of did something like this in Europe, very similar actually, but uh, the Russian Empire doesn't like that different version of Russia. I can tell you that right now. Things just get a little wild when they go deep into China. They even grab the Korean Peninsula. I don't think this looks too insane. It's just the stuff in the Middle East that I think it's like starting to overreach a bit. If this was the case, a majority of the faith in the country would still be Russian Orthodox, but with a lot of other things as well. Oh, I like that they show you the expansion dates when they got all these lands. They would have had to win like 
every single conflict they've ever been a part of and just obliterate their enemy every time and then also like not go commie probably oh yeah where's alaska they'd probably have a huge north america as well thought i read somewhere that russian colonists visited hawaii so it's possible they could have got that too oh and they also briefly had a part of california for a time there so things could have really gotten out of control they had fort ross which is like north of san francisco for a little bit there spain didn't like that kind of terrifying now to think of a russian empire that just got everything they ever wanted what if britain kept hanover instead of it uniting with germany don't know how much of a difference that would have made i would think that would they'd still get obliterated off the mainland this was during the no-no german time so you know they were pretty angry i don't know exactly how long this would have lasted it seems like a really overstretch i can see britain like getting a little bit here but dipping that far into germany i don't know i don't see how they'd even want to keep that how would you defend that and again it's britain they had a quarter of the world i mean i don't think they thought about it like that an alternative cold war where instead of the partition of germany we have the partition of italy this seems like a way worse deal for the ussr that's for sure instead of getting all of this stuff uh they just get this that that's it switzerland would definitely be feeling the heat a bit there now better be neutral at that point also Thick Yugoslavia. What if Italy never existed in 310 BC? Basically, Carthage would act as Rome, right? I feel like the universe would still kind of play out somewhat the same. I don't know how much Carthage would have dipped down into Africa. They definitely probably still would have wiped out Egypt. Or maybe the Greeks somehow stay around, do their own thing. What is that theory that when you try to change the universe, it'll still happen just it's created in a different way, something like that. If you go back in time to kill Hilter, you become Hilter. Languages spoke in an Anglo-Dutch America as of the 1860s. This is like if the Netherlands kept their stuff over here. Basically, if the British were just chilling and they're like, you know what, Netherlands, you can keep all that. We're just going to go after the South. So all the blue would be English-speaking states and orange are Dutch-speaking states. I don't know how the British got Vermont. Probably because of Canada, right? Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, part of it. We would lose that to Canada. I don't think Spanish-speaking parts would change at all all right it's somehow the dutch wrap all the way around i guess they would once they got that sweet taste of colonial nectar they just want to wrap around america and keep grabbing more shit in this universe france would have still gotten louisiana for a brief second there and then of course quebec would speak a little bit of french too this doesn't look too bad i would like to see that a scottish colonial empire by the 1950s scotland is here looking better than ever having the isle of man they would have locked down nova scotia which would have been renamed to something like this a scotland controlled jamaica thinking of reggae bagpipe music that's quite the common Combination. New Edinburgh would be in Panama for some reason. They would help build the canal, possibly. The Falkland Islands? Uh-oh. Argentina, get ready. In this universe, they dabble a little bit into Africa, and then they put all their money in Burma in East Asia. Actually, no, they really wanted New Zealand. It seems like that might be their prize colony. I'm assuming they would all eventually lose this stuff at some point, because they all did in the normal timeline. But then seeing these countries grow from their Scottish roots... That would be, uh, that'd be something else. Big Chungus Finland, based off of, like, different groups, language-wise and ethnic group-wise. There's not a whole lot of people living in this part of Sweden anyway, so, you know, you could probably take that from them now, and no one would notice a difference. Estonia really, really loves Finland, so I think they wouldn't have a problem with this. Your biggest issue is, like, taking this stuff from Russia. That, that might be a little bit hard, but, you know, you've had success against Russia in the past. You could do it. This doesn't look completely improbable. Maybe we can still see this one day. The Hawaiian Missile Crisis. I have so many questions questions about this map because well it's the kingdom of hawaii so we never got them they're independent they probably went communist or at the very least the ussr put their missiles here just to you know share a little bit but then there is mexico who kept all their old land they have los angeles and san francisco still mexico i'm assuming is democratic that's why the ussr i don't even know if it's the ussr whatever communist forces there are in this universe they put missiles there and mexico is the main defender of democracy i guess it doesn't seem as threatening just because hawaii is still very far away it's like a five-hour plane ride from from LA. Pretty sure rockets could go this far in the 1960s, but it doesn't seem scary. Cuba was like right there next to all of the US. No wonder tensions were a little, little high. And there it is, the most cursed thing I think I've actually seen all day. If Switzerland was Slavic, mostly Croatian and Slovenian and Czech. I don't know why, but yeah, Slavic, Switzerland, I will say it sounds good. Slav squatting on the Alps. That does sound pretty epic though. As always, big thanks to the patrons. I'm about a nut. Zephy, Thick Boy 3000, The Glen Council, Bowling Like Stall. Stormtrooper 501 Scotty from Marketing Patrick C Palantino 1013 Manny Manny 74 Mac M203 Brush Luxembourg Lover Fusion Wolf Epi Nick Elijah Senpai Dalton D Arian After Hours Annie Key And Aaron F 